Connect Her. And if anyone don't know what Connect Her is, it's a empowerment mentoring program for preteen and teen young ladies. We are empowering them to become great women in the society and in our churches. Amen. If everyone don't know who I am, I am Lady Kyra Clopton, First Lady here at Cosmopolitan Community Church. <laughs> and we're going to have a prayer by Minister Patsy Lyons, and then we're going to get started. And right before we bring our first speaker, Pastor want to come in and do a quick 10-minute um, perspective from a male's view of how a man should treat a young lady. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Let's clear our minds as we go to the throne of grace. Most Heavenly Father, we just come in your mighty name. We just come just to say thank you. We thank you for this day because this is the day that you have made. We are rejoicing and we are so glad in it. We thank you, O oh God, because you are an awesome God. You are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the great God. You are I am that I am. And we thank you on today, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that you will be in the midst Oh God, and show yourself powerful as we teach and learn and encourage our young ladies on today. Be with each and every speaker, oh God. Be with each and every young lady, Lord. Allow them to glean what it is that you will have them to learn on today. Touch our first lady right now who had the vision to take this task on and bless her in such a mighty way, oh God. Just keep her and hold her right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We bless your name. We bless the food, oh God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we bless the hands that so diligently prepare it, oh God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for this night, oh God, because we give it all to you. All the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We thank you for every participant right now, oh God. Every young lady that's on their way, every parent that has taken a part, and we bless your name. We thank you for our pastor, oh God, that has a heart for the young people, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray and seal this prayer. Thank God, and amen. Well, welcome, everyone. Um, I, I, I know it's supposed to be women's night, ladies' night. Um, as we thought about this night, after as my wife and I prepared, the reason for this night is to make sure that young ladies, developing women, um, have a safe space to talk about some woman things. Um, you, you have a bunch of seasoned women in here. I, I want I wanted to encourage all of the. Did I introduce myself? I'm, I'm the pastor here. I'm Pastor Eric Clopton. <laughs> So, so this hit me um, as I've been, so I have three daughters myself, for those of you who don't know, and, and I go to quite a few places, and I saw some things that were disturbing to me as a, as a man, and, and how young ladies don't know what it's like to be a young lady. Um, certain, certain, some simple basic things that we took for granted growing up, we thought was common sense, and I'm finding out some things just didn't transfer over. So we wanted to set a space where young ladies could ask questions. This is safe space, no judgment zone here. There's no question that's dumb. I'm asking that you would be open, and if there's anything that you have ever thought about or, or wanted to know, there's a, enough experience here in the room to address it all, I believe. So um, our church believes in addressing things from threefold, natural, spiritual, and then also from the emotional standpoint. So um, I want to welcome each of you. I want you to take advantage of tonight. Um, please take advantage. Um, there is, I, I remember, it's a short talk real quick. Um, my daughters, when they were growing up, each and every one of them, my wife gave certain books to prepare them for the various stages of life. 
One was before, as they became preteens, you know, young ladies go through and they prepare and, they're, and eventually they're going to have their menstrual cycles. And our daughters, they were given books way before the day hit. And they had friends who would hit and they didn't know what to do. Nobody told them anything. It, you know, they're, they're trying to figure this thing out because nobody, they, and they didn't have anybody to talk to or go to. So I figured that instances like that, and then there may be other things that the young ladies are going through. So this is safe space. We're gonna, it, it, the goal here is to address whatever needs to be. It, um, I, I ask questions, ask plenty of questions. Once again, this is no judgment zone. This is safe space. We're not here to judge, we're here to fix. Amen. Hello, everyone. We're awake. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Like, I know you all can hear me. Um, thank you all for inviting me to speak to you all. Thank you, Lady Clapton, Pastor. Um, when I was asked to come, I said, let me see. What can I speak about today? Once again, my name is Tanisha Thomas. That's all I had. <laughs> I'm a mother of four. I have three girls, one boy, 25 years old. What does that have? Right? Okay. So I said, okay. In addition to that, I'm a management professional. So that means at work I'm in charge. I'm at home, at, I'm in charge. I'm also a wife of 12 years, so I'm in charge again. Okay? <laughs> so... Lady boss, that's what we're gonna call me. We're gonna call you all that as well, okay? You are all in a position to be in charge, right? But how do we do that? By show of hands, who all knows or have heard of the golden rule? Show of hands, golden rule? Okay. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I believe that's Matthew 7 and 12. Okay, what that essentially means is the energy that you put out is the energy you get back. Now, when you're in charge, you can't be attitudinal <laughs> because that's the energy that you're going to get back. Okay, so dealing with the 40 to 50, say, the different attitudes that I deal with on a daily basis, you have to be prayed up, okay? Because everyone has a different situation, a different soul, a different difference going on. How about that, okay? And you have to be able to combat that. You pray, first and foremost. Father God, give me the strength to get through this day and let it go. You are covered, <laughs> absolutely. So young ladies, let me guess. You're at school. Something happened at school that, woo, it perturbed you. I'm so hot about it. Who she gets on my nerves? You bring it home and you tell the parent about it. You know what she did today? She said this, 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 and this. Do you think that, that child is talking about you? You brought it home to your family. They're not even thinking about you anymore. <laughs> They've gone on with their day. That's not what you want to do, okay? Anything, if, if it goes on in school, you let it go. Don't bring it home to your family because that's transferring energy. You're bringing bad energy home from school. If you take good energy to school, it'll come back with you, okay? People are watching you. Everyone is watching you. They might say, hey, She's sparkling today. She wasn't sparkling yesterday. What's wrong? And then you have to answer. I didn't bring my sparkly book bag today. I didn't feel like it. You got an attitude about it? No. Bring it in tomorrow. Whatever you put in is what you get out, okay? You have an attitude, you have an attitude, you have an attitude, you have one, you have you one, you have one. If we all together 
collectively, how many people are in here? About 30, 30, 40 ish. Do you know how much energy that is in a room? Now make it all positive energy. Feel that energy. Do you know how amazing it would be if all of this energy went out into the world? Someone says, hey, like, okay, I'll give you a scenario. Um, I've been, I've worked for UPS for close to 20 years. And it's a male dominated situation. It's a male dominated job. So, when I come in and I say good morning, and everybody goes, mm, is that gonna, is that gonna mess up my day? No, I get louder. Good morning, how are you? I'm still here, I'm not going anywhere. The energy you put out is the energy you get back. By the end of the day, I have people walking past me going, oh, I didn't see you this morning, good morning. Oh, I didn't hear you this morning. Good morning. You have to be able to deal with what's going on. As young ladies, you've got it twice as hard. As beautiful black young ladies, you have it three times as hard. But you keep your smile. You keep your head up. You keep moving. I've got several different shades of black in here. And it's all beautiful. You continue with that great energy. You don't feel like getting up and going to school in the morning. I don't feel like going to work. But you still got to go. Because <laughs> at the end, is a pot of gold. It's called comfortability. <laughs> it's called happiness. The energy that I put out when I got up this morning was good morning. Thank you, Father, for waking me up this morning, closed in my right mind, able to see another day that you have made. It's what I say every morning. And everyone that I touch, they get a piece of that. I, sometimes I get uh, accused of extreme happiness sometimes because I want to hear good morning or good evening or, hey, how you doing? You have to do that. You don't walk around with your face all frowned up. We're all human. Things happen. I understand that. But you have to learn how to let that go and deal with it. You all are young. You have no problems. <laughs> I'm gonna say this again. You all are young. You have no problems. I get up, I go to school. I do my activity, I go to run track, I do whatever it is I do at school and I come home and I interact with my parents. Ooh, my life is so hard. <laughs> it's what I tell my, my, my daughters. Ooh, my life is so hard. What did you do today? I went to school. My life is so hard. <laughs> They're out cold. They come home from school. They... <laughs> what y'all do today? We went to school. I'm waiting on the hard part. <laughs> I understand you all think, oh, life is so hard right now. You have no idea. Relish it. Relish in it. Youth. Don't walk around with attitude all day. It's not needed. It's not necessary. Not at all. It's, it's not necessary. I, I heard something. It was uh, water off a duck's back. Oh, she said something I didn't like. Oh, I'm going to be mad about it all day. Why? Why are we mad about it all day? When I was growing up, my mother said something to me. She said, you know what? People are going to talk about you all day long to the day you die. It's up to you whether you care or not. Okay? Everyone in here is distinctive. Everyone in here is beautiful. 
And for those of you that don't think so, y'all better get it together. Because I know your parents didn't have any ugly children. Okay? Beautiful young ladies. No attitudes, no nothing. Group work. Y'all had that group work at work, at school? And y'all can't stand the group work? How many of y'all can't stand that group work? Mm-hmm. One, two, look at that. Not y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that the group work where you got that one person that does not pull in their weight. You the two two to five not pulling their weight. Y'all got attitude because they don't pull their weight. Y'all better let that go. <laughs> Y'all better let that go. Y'all gonna have group work your whole life. Deal with it. Okay. I was telling my daughter the other day. She was like, but they don't ever do anything. I'm doing all the work. I understand that. But you're going to be their boss someday. They're going to need you for something someday. You're going to remember that. They may not get where they're going, but you're going to get what you're going. Let it go, dear. Let it go. That includes you big people, too. <laughs> You have to. All right, ladies, golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The energy that you put out is the energy you're going to get back. That negative energy, we're not worried about it. It's got nothing to do with you. It's got something to do with them. Especially if you're smiling and you're feeling good. It's their problem, not yours. Thank you, ladies. All right. Our next speaker, Maria. Come on up here. <laughs> she will be speaking on not settling in life. Thank you, love. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to speak today. Um, my point of view is for you all to learn not to settle in life. I know a lot of times we start off with a plan in life and think that that's the only way things can go. And that's not true. Every day you're going to be faced on a road where you're going to have a choice. Go to the right, go to the left, go straight. If you need to, go back. And each and every path is okay. Don't think that you're stuck in one frame. You can veer to, to the right if you need to because, oops, something didn't work out right. I didn't quite catch something. I didn't feel I learned something enough yet. I need to maybe take a few more classes or I need to take a little bit more time to figure out exactly what I want to do or how I want to do it. So I veer to the right a little bit and that's okay because there's nothing to say that you can't get back on that path. I'm a mom. My son is 21 and if you asked me when I was his age what I was going to do in life, I was going to do deafness rehab counseling. I wanted to work with the deaf. That's what I went to Northern Illinois University for. Guess what? I graduated from Columbia College. I did do some sign language interpreting classes there, which I thought that was going to be my major, but guess what? Yet again, I had to veer to one side and find something that worked for me, and then I was able to come back and do a little more of what I wanted to do. And so what I've learned is you don't just say, okay, well, this is where I'm stuck at. This is all I can do. Every day I get up, much like most of your parents do, and go to a job that I don't hate, but it's not my, yes, I'm going to work. How many of you have something that you every single morning wake up for and say, Yep, I'm going. No? Nobody? 
It's a blessing when you're able to have that. And what my whole point to you all is, is don't settle. You can have that. You have to find ways within what you're doing to bring yourself joy, to keep you motivated, to keep you going. So one of the things I do, and I didn't realize it until more recently, is I like to help people. I tend to find myself doing it all the time without realizing it frequently. So I go to work each day. I work in the Cook County Public Defender's Office. I deal with people who are accused of crimes. Maybe they did it, maybe they didn't. I don't know. My job every day is to help them how I can, the best I can. I take what makes me happy and what brings me joy and I put it into what I do. Now, that's not to say that I'm not going to have a day where somebody's on my phone talking crazy. But I have to stop and think the situation they're in, how they feel. And a lot of times that will make me stop and say, take a deep breath. Tell them to take a deep breath. And by the end of the call, half the time, they're a lot happier and they feel that they've been heard and they feel that they've been helped. And that's all I can ask for. So I told you, I started off at NIU, right? I left NIU. I went to Daly College. Was not happy. Eventually, I found a program here in Chicago that would allow me to get back to what I wanted, which was working with the deaf at Columbia College. Started that program, and then I already had my son at the time, and realized, wow, sign language interpreters are very much needed. They're very important. It's helping. It's still helping the deaf community, not in the way I originally wanted, but it's still providing a great service. But um, I can't provide for my son the way I want to doing that, unfortunately, because you have to be an independent contractor and I would lose health insurance. And at the time, he needed, um, he needed me to have regular insurance. So I had a choice. Settle for having insurance and not really enjoying my job and just kind of being where I was at the time I was working at the president's office for the county. I was a secretary. That's not what I felt was my calling. Or I could figure out ways that I could be happy with what I was doing, which was being a secretary or an administrative assistant, which is really just a big helper, and put everything I could into making my boss's day and the people who came into the office's day better by assisting them to the best of my ability. And guess what? June 26, I made 24 years of working with the county. I have six left and I can retire. Now, that's not to say I'm done doing what I'm supposed to do, because guess what I'm gonna do in six years? I have now figured out that I'm good at project management. I can look at people's businesses, which that's because I'm always helping my friends with their businesses. I can sit there and come in, look at organizations, because I've sat on quite a few boards for nonprofits. I've helped in different programs, like I cooked for a homeless shelter for almost 10 years, once a month, 40 people, whether people showed up to help or not. I've done so many different things in life, helping, doing what I love to do, that I now have the option of saying, you know what? Let me help you do what you want to do and do it even better. So now, in six years, 
when I retire officially from Cook County, because it'll be around the time I'm 51, I'm 43 now, so not that long, I'll actually be able to sit there and have a company that my purpose is coming in, helping people fix a problem, look at a, uh, what they're doing and how can they do better. But I didn't settle. You hear me say I don't love jumping up every morning and doing my job. That's because it takes away from me sometimes being able to help the 501c3 I want to work on or my friend's business or cooking at the shelter or doing something like this. This is my passion. Doing things like this, doing things like cooking at the shelter and do, me picking projects that I personally feel feed my soul, my spirit, my drive, and allow me to put out good things into the world and allow me to make things better. Or as my, my, my company, Beguin Services, tagline is, is let me take the stress out of your life. I've been a virtual personal assistant meaning I can be somebody's assistant and not have to be in their face. I'm good at it. I've learned one of my bosses, anytime there's a big event, guess what? I know she needs a strawberry soda because when she gets stressed out, that's what she needs. That's what makes her operate better. And by me figuring that out, that makes her work better. I have a boss, Lester, he likes to be comfortable. When our big boss came in, we had a new boss come through, she wanted him to have this big desk that was fancy and nice and new. And I had to pull her to the side and say respectfully, can he keep his old desk please? Why? Bigger is better is new and that's, you know, everything, right? That's what we all think. Not for Lester. For Lester, him being comfortable makes him work better. But because I took the time to figure him out and learn him by helping him over the years, I was able to go and advocate for him, you know, that helping thing that I don't realize I sometimes do. And he got to keep his old desk. And it's better for him. He's less stressed. He can do more work. It all works out. So when I'm telling you don't settle, who has a dream here? Everybody? Even if you don't know exactly what it is yet, everybody's got something, right? So whatever your dream is, I want you at some point today to take a few minutes and think, how will my dream look in 10 years? In five years, in two years, how can I get to that point? And if I'm on the way to that point and there's a roadblock, I used to want to do nails. I like doing that. Guess what? I also have OCD, and the minute I see a mistake, I got to stop. I got to redo it. So guess what? That was my stumbling block. That's okay. I just went and found some place that I liked that did nails. And I could tell them, hey, can I have a puzzle pattern on my nail this time? I still got to be creative. I still got to figure out ways to make me happy, right? It's just I can't do it because that's not for me. But I didn't let that stop me. I didn't settle and say, oh, well, I can never have nails. So you can take, whether it's singing, whether it's writing, whether it's cooking, whether it's, say you do tumbling, whatever you do, you can find ways to build it into what you're gonna do later in life. I used to tell my son when he was little, he loves basketball, 21, still loves basketball. 
He literally played basketball since he was a year old. Somehow, some way, we've done everything. Grammar school basketball, park district basketball, AAU, travel, high school, college. He went to Spain. Guess what I would tell him? If there's a day you don't want to play, but you still love the game, I don't care if you're a barber, be a barber for the NBA. You want to, he wants to do actuary science. That's a whole bunch of math. I'm not great at math, but he is. Guess what he's going, I've told him to do. Take that, when you finish college, go do that for the NBA. Go do that for a team. Go do that for a basketball program. Take whatever you love and roll it into whatever you have to do for your life. Because when we settle and we give up and we stop doing what feeds us, we don't grow. We feel stuck. We get unhappy. So by not settling, by moving forward, by finding different ways, by saying, okay, this is in my way. I'm going to juke over here. I'm going to juke over there. You just keep moving. You're growing. And then you'll be somebody's light. You'll be somebody's inspiration. Because they're going to wonder how they can do something similar to you. But most importantly, you're going to continue to grow. You're going to continue to flourish. And that's what's important. Don't let anybody tell you because they're afraid or their experiences that you have to stop. Because you don't. Me not being able to do nails didn't stop me from getting them. Yes, I don't have any on right now. I'm taking a small break, but best believe in three weeks, I'm going to have some nails, and I'll be like, look. <laughs> so if you take anything away, which I know it kind of veered around, but don't settle. Figure out what you love. Figure out what feeds you. Figure out what makes you happy. Find ways to do it. If you have to do a regular nine to five job because you have to put food on the table, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. Because I'm going to tell you, every single day I didn't like doing what I was doing. I didn't realize I was actually doing something that I actually love to do because I was stuck in thinking I'm settling until I realized how to turn it around and put in what I put me into it. And now I'm more than good at what I do. I sit there and look at, I have a plan for in six years what I'm going to do. But I have all this experience now from all these other things I've done. The cooking, the this, the that. To take that into what I want to do later on when it's time for me to pick what I'm going to do for me. So there will be time where you have to do some things that you don't want to do, like go to school every day. But you find joy in something in school every day, don't you? Whether it's seeing your friends, whether it's learning something, whether it's passing a te you know, certain tests, field trips, you know. Find a way to enjoy what you're doing. And then it will feed you, and then you're not you keep growing, you keep moving, you don't settle, and then you're, you're on to bigger and better things. So don't settle, keep moving forward, always look for the positive in whatever you're doing, and you'll continue to grow, and you'll continue to give to others without realizing it. So that's my, those, those are my nuggets. Always look for that. All right, we're going to continue on as everyone is finishing up eating. Our next speaker will be Wanda Cunningham, and she'll be coming to you speaking about how to stay focused on the dream deferred, and if you think you can do it, you can do it. So let's give a round of applause for Wanda. I'm still trying to figure out where this is going to go. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, I am having such a good time, y'all. Um, thank you to 
Pastor Eric, who came and gave some good words when he was here. Uh, thank you to, look, Miss First Lady Clopton is working. Ma'am, thank you. This is an amazing idea that you and your pastor boo got together and thought it up. I'm not mad. Amen. Okay. Um, I want you to know, look, psst, 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 psst. I want you to know that I love you. I'm proud of you. And I am glad to call you my friend. Yay. Okay. All right, y'all. Maybe I do need somebody to hold this book. I don't know. Oh, look, well, wait a second. I think I got it. Um, so I'm glad that, you know, God is good because things got switched around a little bit, but I'm glad for that because everything that everybody's been talking about is like, I'm riding all the coattails of Tennille and Maria and Tanisha. I'm just riding baby. Okay. So they have already set the, the standard and the path for what needs to be said and what needs to be heard. I see you. You gonna let me borrow them, that headband? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna try to get it later. Um, so let's get started. I have a question for everybody. Well, for the little ladies. Uh, do you have a dream? Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. Are you on the phone? No. Girl. You can put it. Mm. Jesus, be a fence. <sighs> so, if you don't have a dream, don't you worry. I'm here to help. We all here to help. You're going to figure it out. I'm not going to tell you my age, but you should know that I have a dream that took me much, much longer than I expected to get to. So that's what this is about. A dream deferred is something that you didn't know you had until you had it, and it was a lot later than you thought you would get it. Uh, a dream is a vision, a hope, ambition, an aspiration that you have what you've always wanted to be. Can you picture that? Girl, if you don't stop texting, I just don't know what's that important. Yes, cold busted. I, listen, y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't know me. I'm a cosmopolite, you probably didn't know that, but, uh, cause I was at a job, Jesus, uh, that didn't allow me to work, uh, only allowed me to work on weekends. So I'm here, you'll be seeing my face a lot more often. I see you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, amen, okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, so when you're picturing yourself in this dream, ladies, um, what do you see? We got social media now, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, which I really truly don't understand. I think it's a little, I, okay, thank you. Cause I'm like, what, why, huh? Um, how do you do that? How do you stay focused on what you want to be and who you want to be when everybody else is living their best life? on Facebook, Snapchatting it up, Instagramming it up, looking like they got it going on, and guess what, they don't. It's a lie. <laughs> Thank you, back up, back up singer. Uh, I'm here to pass on to you what somebody told me a long time ago, and I'm glad I finally believed it. If you can think it, you can do it. Now I gotta turn the page, because I don't know. So we can talk a little bit about, I'm, I don't know if everybody's been hearing about self-care. Y'all a little, do y'all know what that is? Taking care of yourself, making sure you're okay. Yes, I see you nodding, that's good enough for me, baby, thank you. Uh, what you need to do first to get that dream deferred and to figure out what it is, if you don't know, or even if you do, discover you. That's a part of self-care and taking care of yourself. Find your gifts, your talents, your passion, Passion is kind of a grown up word for what you really love to do. What makes you, as Maria said, want to get up in the morning and get at it and do it. Girl, ma'am, not you, your friend. Hello? Okay, she's really talking, okay. Um, <laughs> what do you enjoy to do? It's a very simple question. It's not complex. What do you like to do? What makes you feel good? What let, how do you have fun? Do you read, do you write, do you perform? Do you do like I'm doing and get in front of your friends and do a monologue? And everybody listening and watching and going, ooh, what's she talking about? She always doing something. What is that thing? I'm going to confess something to y'all. When I was around your age, yes, I was your age once. Yes. Believe it. It's happening. Age is coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> what I used to do, uh, speaking of simple things, is me and my mom would sit in front of the TV and watch her favorite home shopping channel. 
Are y'all old enough to know what home shopping channel? You do? Thank you. I love you, Kat. Thank you, baby. Because she's like, yes, I know, I know, I know Shuby. Uh, we would do this as a pastime. She was buying, I wasn't, but I didn't care. I was spending time with her. And when they would bring on the jewelry, honey, let me tell you something. <gasps> Diamonds, gold, gemstones, the color, the sparkle, the vibe. 